through the catalog. We're not trying to diagnose, treat, or cure anything, but we're using, honestly, the foods and sources that we were intended um, that just happen to be in supplement form. So we're talking about the all-natural fiber mix. This fiber mix is actually a really cool thing. Sorry, Brian's actually going to go grab it because I actually have some on hand. Um, fiber is one of those things that we take for granted. And depending on our eating lifestyle, we actually don't get enough of it. And we're going to go into what the actual recommended daily allowance is for it. But it's in the old, nice, um, if you if you remember, some of you that have been with us, these are the old um, canisters. And it, it's, oh, it smells so yummy. Makes me want to have some. Um, it is basically a powder that um, it goes right into, you can put it in, I've had it in water. Um, you can put it in a smoothie. You can put it in everything. It, you open it up, it smells like bananas. And I'm like, if you have chocolate shake and you put bananas, it's like a chocolate banana shake. So it's really, really cool. So, so here's some things that, um, signs that you need fiber. If you're not pooping, if, you, um, if you're having GI, gastrointestinal issues, um, what is that? Constipation, diarrhea. Yes, those are complete opposite from each other, but you actually need more fiber. Um, there's a whole anatomy lesson as far as why you need that. And it has to do with shutting off a, a valve. If a valve gets let open, you're, it's going to create diarrhea. And if the valve doesn't open, well, it's going to create constipation and nothing's moving. Um, if you have bowel discomfort, irregularity, or um, irritation, um, we should be pooping twice a day. Uh, diverticulitis, people are like, well, fiber, I've been told if I have diverticulitis that I'm not supposed to eat fiber. Well, fiber, honestly, if you even Google it, they say doctors don't know how it, it happens. But one of the key components is, is if you eat too much meat and fat, which are extremely hard on the digestion system, eating too much red meat and fat actually slows down the digestive tract. And it can actually cause backage. And in the actual intestines, there's little pockets that think of a piece of popcorn kernel getting stuck in your gums and your teeth. It basically does that on the inside. Things aren't moving. Things get stuck. Things get embedded. You get diverticulitis. Hemorrhoids, um, I never, ever want to experience these. Um, I've worked with someone with hemorrhoids. And um, bowel cancers, fiber is our natural toothbrush. Excess mucus. So if you do have um, bowel movements and you, you sometimes you'll get like a little flatulence with some mucus in there, or sometimes you can notice it um, on your stools, um, gallstones, estrogen about, uh, imbalance. And this is overall for hormones in general. Um, fiber actually does help regulate um, estrogen. So especially for those people with estrogen dominance, um, that means you have too much and it could be from synthetic hormones. Um, but the thing is, is it helps balance, um, that estrogen out. So blood sugar imbalance, again, it prevents the blood sugar spikes and, uh, cholesterol that's all tied into the liver. So, so the benefits of fiber, um, yeah, it's, it's insane. I, I, I know we haven't started on the fill-ins real, real quick, but just take a look at that. If you think about how much fiber you've eaten today, how much have you consumed? We're supposed to be getting 25 grams of, uh, per day for women and 38 for men. I can say I'm probably actually about 25 grams. I, um, what is it? Uh, strengthens. It actually strengthens your probiotics. Um, so if you're having issues with immune systems, um, fiber helps with weight loss, helps you uh, feel fuller longer. Um, and because re regular elimination is important, if fiber is sticky and it actually attracts um, and pulls out the toxins from the intestinal wall. So that's why it's so essential in our detox that we actually use the plant fibers. Um, we'll talk about that in a little, um, but, but we'll talk about that as far as what it, how it actually serves its purpose. Um, and again, it reduces the length of time that the GI tract is exposed to harmful substances. I'm going to tell you, if you're eating, this is just an off the, off the chart thing. If you're eating, you want to eat your vegetables, fruits, grains, before you eat any animal proteins. 
food for thought. Because if you eat your animal proteins, the process is actually quite a lot slower. So if you have all of your fiber behind that, it's going to sit and ferment in your digestive tract. So if you're thinking about eating um, strategies and how to make the best of your GI tract, going to be your best way to do it. So we're on number one. Okay, number one, great to sweep out the colon. So that's the word there is sweep. <laughs> number two, wonderful for protection against colon cancer. So that's the underlying word there is colon. Number three is fantastic for protection against diverticulitis. That was mentioned earlier. So when I'm on, we want to spell that one because that oh. one's a long one. So go ahead and spell it. D I V. Hold on, you got that was slower. D I V. V is in Victor. E R T. T is in Tom. I C U L I T I S. So if you think about the itis, diverticulitis. That's an inflammation. Inflammation. Okay. Uh, number four is great for weight control and weight loss. So both the pillars there are weight. Um, it helps, uh, let's see, side note, it fills you up with hardly any calories and stabilizes your weights if you want to maintain. So it, you get some extra um, extra fullness from your meal without that many extra calories. And the trick is, is if you eat fiber, wait about 15 minutes if you don't, if you think you're not full, Wait, because if anyone has eaten oatmeal, <laughs> it sticks to you. Or if you eat um, pasta, even whole wheat pasta or lentil pasta, wait 15 minutes and th that'll fill you up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, number five helps control blood sugar for diabetics. That's the underlying there is blood sugar because it helps control that regulation of the insulin in your blood. So help slow it down. So. Yeah, basically because of the way your body processes it, um, especially you want to make sure to get the, the complex carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. That's where your fiber is. And what it does is even though you are getting carbohydrates, which are sugar, the fiber actually in it does slowly release that glucose um, versus comp or, uh, simple carbs. Those are going to spike your blood sugar. And your, your body's going to keep producing insulin and it's not going to stop and it's going to spike. So versus when you have that fiber, it gets that glucose, it gets that it's where uh, insulin production, but it slows it down so you don't get the up, down, up, down, up, down. Go ahead. Uh, where are we at? Number six, fantastic for plaque in the cardiovascular system. So it just helps prevent that plaque build up, which leads to everything atherosclerosis and high cholesterol and heart attacks, basically. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome number seven helps give you that full feeling with very little calories. Again, and you get that satisfaction more from the meal. And there are some that are better than others, some that have more uh, fiber content. And just to side note, if you're looking for fiber rich products, you want at least a ratio of five to one. And for those people that are like, I'm not mathematicians, neither am I. But if you take, for example, something with 35 carbohydrates, and if you look at the fiber content and the fiber content says seven, 35 into seven, or seven into 35, sorry, seven into 35. Five to one ratio. Is a five to one ratio. So if you divide seven, divide, uh, 35 divided by seven, it's a five. So if you get something like split peas, you're actually more almost to a two to one ratio, which is actually closer to one, which means that has some pretty darn good fiber and it doesn't take you a whole lot to fill you up. Okay. So let's see, number eight, it helps you move toxins from your body. Oh boy. Now we so don't not even get me started on that. That kind of goes without saying, if you eliminate more, then you're going to eliminate more toxins. If you're constipated, then they're going to stay inside you. Yep. So again, it goes into number nine, wonderful for constipation. Again, it helps keep you regular. Uh, number 10, tremendous to fight against cholesterol. And it is also, for number 11, a great thickener for soups. 
that some good sources include steel cut oats. Uh, again, again, you definitely want to get that organic. Um, same with kale, uh, blended to get the good fiber. Uh, when you look at something like kale, um, and we're going to go into this a little bit later, um, it has some insoluble fiber. Um, blending it actually helps break it down for the body. And we'll explain that in a minute. Um, papaya, mango, um, again, some of those for those people with sugar sensitivities, um, they not, may not be um, as, as good to, um, there's other ones that you can do. Those ones tend to be a little bit more sugary. Um, so that can be, that fi this fiber blend has 12 natural sources of fiber. So I'm like, I'm not kidding. You, you get fiber, um, a lot of fiber. The Neo Poly Fiber Blend helps remove cholesterol without robbing the nutrients. That is essential. So um, some, some can actually strip the nutrients. Um, it has as much fiber as two apples. So that's really cool. Um, it contains both insoluble and soluble fiber, uh, cellulose, hemulose, hem, hemicellulose, and ligand. Uh, it increases your fecal, your boop, bulk and frequency. Uh, the soluble fiber has gums and pectins, which bind to cholesterol and slows its absorption. So for those people with um, those the cholesterol related issues, fiber is huge. Diabetics, fiber is huge. Um, so much of it's the one of the number one things that when we go on keto or low carb diets, a lot of times the fiber gets left out. And that is so essential. Um, recommend to get again, 25 to 30 grams per day, um, 12 to 20 grams equals 12 bananas or 12, 10 slices of whole wheat bread. And I take the whole wheat bread. It depends on the whole wheat bread because most of the whole wheat bread out there is just garbage and it has no fiber in it. Believe me, I have looked into that. This is a good slide. If you want to take a picture of it, you're more than welcome to. You have differences between soluble and insoluble fiber. They're both just as important. When you have soluble fiber, it means it dis dissolves in the water. Um, it lowers the cholesterol, supports the gut flora. So that's the, the good probiotics. Mm -hmm. It improves blood sugar. Um, it's found in, again, here's some apples, beans, nuts, oatmeal, sweet potatoes, and lentils. And I'm going to tell you, side note, if you do beans and lentils, if you don't get canned beans or lentils, which I'm going to tell you they're, I'm okay as long as they're BPA free, um, cans, you know, you can watch the sodium content. Um, but if you soak your lentils and beans overnight, that's perfect. If you get them in the cans, you always want to make sure to uh, rinse them. The reason why is both lentils and beans, they have certain enzyme inhibitors, which means that it blocks certain enzymes, digestive enzymes from functioning. Um, so you always want to soak those um, or at least rinse them off. Um, and again, the soluble fiber feeds the beneficial bacteria that good. Insoluble is something that does not dissolve in water. You cannot actually absorb it, but it is just as important because it promotes laxation. It supports intestinal health. Um, you can see the sources in there, um, whole wheat, leafy greens. Quinoa is listed in there. Quinoa tends to be higher in protein. Your bulgur, B-U-L-G-U-R, is cracked wheat. And that is actually even more um, beneficial with, with a lot of more fiber than quinoa, but just as good. Uh, your brown rice, um, it can have some. Um, your... your uh, uh, seeds. So your nuts and seeds actually has them. It creates that bulk in the stool and it supports the bowel health. Um, and, and that being said, it's, we need both of those fibers. You're looking at your soluble fiber tends to be again in more, you'll notice your, um, fruits versus your vegetables, your insoluble fiber, maybe more in the vegetables. That's why when people say, I only eat vegetables, I don't eat fruits, well, you're only getting one type of fiber. So we get all in moderation. Um, and of course, if you have any, oh, my apologies. Um, if you have any other questions or concerns, um, let me know.